about to start my session on automating communications. That sounds really wonderful. Uh, using Sufi CRM. The, the bit that's not going to be automated is me walking to my screen to touch something and then come back. But we're going to talk about automating communication. Just uh, two questions for you. Who is aware of scheduled reminders in Sufi CRM? Oh, that's a lot. Who's using them? Okay. Who's aware of city rules? Who's using it? Okay. Those are the two main topics. So if you now want to walk out, please feel free. Okay. Um, my name is Eric Hommel, member of City Co-op. I live in Hull, the Netherlands, with my wife, the two youngest kids, four cats and a dog. Any more details? Uh, ask me afterwards. I've been active in the civil community since 2009 as a developer, consultant and project manager. And I'm currently involved with a number of projects, which is not... Well, it's interesting, but not for this one. Okay. So, when we talk about uh, communications and automated communications, what I'm talking about is stuff like I want to automatically segment my donors into different groups or I want to send an email with a survey when a case or an activity is complete. Or I want to add people to the right group when they register for an event. Or I want to send an email two weeks before the membership expires. Stuff like that. And there are basically two instruments that I know of. There are probably lots more, but the two that I use. And one of them is the core CV instrument scheduled reminders especially for the emailing. And the other one is CV Rules, which is an extension. And I'm just going to take you through both of them with a few examples of scheduled reminders and CV Rules, and I'm going to focus mainly on the user perspective. If there's any technical questions, I'll park them to the end of the session. Okay, so let's have a look at scheduled reminders. We access them using administer communication and scheduled reminders. And we should remember, I'm not going to mention it anymore, it's only user guide if you want to look up, but it's important that there's a scheduled job for scheduled reminders. It's called send scheduled reminders and you should switch it on, otherwise it won't work. You can use scheduled reminders based on contacts, activities, events, membership and contributions. And what's also nice to know is that you have additional tokens, apart from the standard contact tokens with email greeting and address C and that sort of stuff, you also have some additional ones which are based on the entities you're using. So some are based on an activity, some are based on an event, some are based on a contribution, etc. I can create scheduled reminders during event creation, if you're using events. But mainly it will happen using administer communication scheduled reminders. We'll have a look at that in a second. And for contacts, you could, for example, send a happy birthday mail automatically. For activities, you could send an email after an activity has been completed. For contributions, you can send an email to everyone who contributed using a specific donation page if you've used the CVCRM contribution page, of course. Or whenever they receive the donation with a financial type, you can send an email to specific event participants, and you can do the whole renewal email communication process using scheduled reminders. So let's have a look. Yay. <laughs> So, I've set a couple up, and we're going to look at them in a minute. You can see I've set the happy birthday one, which is basically says a reminder for a contact based on the birth date. It's one hour after whatever the, the date, the birth date actually passed, and it sends an email. And if I look at it, if I look at the settings, 
I can see how this is set up. So I've entered the title, picked up the entity, which could be contact, activity, event, contribution, said I'm going to base it on the birth date, and I'm going to do it on each anniversary. One hour after it happened, I'm going to send an email from us at Civicon London, and I can enter, then I can then use an email template. We wish you a happy birthday from all of us at Civicon. You can obviously use all these wonderful mosaic templates, etc., but this is just an example. It's pretty straightforward, but it's fairly powerful. This is another one, which could be a little more interesting, where you have a specific activity. And in this case, I've added an activity called coaching session. And what this scheduled reminder should do is, whenever that coaching session reaches the status completed, um, with the status completed, it should send an email a day later with a specific template. And then basically the same idea with the contribution, where you can base it on the contribution being of a certain financial type, with a certain status of the contribution. And you can pick any of the dates that happen with the contribution, so the receive date or the receipt date. And here I'm automatically sending a thank you based on the data I have. And as you can see here in the template, apart from the standard contact email greeting, I also have a contribution total amount and a contribution receive date I can use as a token to make a specific mail. <coughs> Any questions so far? How does this relate to the system workflow messages? Yes. Um, can you explain what, what your, um, what you mean? Okay. Possible, yeah? Yeah. In the, in the tokens. Exactly, especially in the memberships, I know that there is a team which says use these or use the standard ones. So it's either one of the two. Does this rough, for the ones who are using it, is this roughly what you do with it? Other stuff you do with scheduled reminders or basically this kind of stuff? Okay. And obviously you can use the membership renewal, the scheduled reminders to do membership renewal reminders and that sort of stuff to say, okay, Two weeks before the membership end date, I want to send out an email that says, please renew your membership. Yeah? Pretty straightforward, specifically sending emails. The next tool you can use for automating workflows or do some automated stuff is CV Rules. CV Rules is a CV CRM native extension, so it should work in all 
content management systems that CPCRM support. And it's an extension which allows you to specify some rules within CVCRM to automate process steps. So it's a little bigger than just sending emails, you can do other stuff as well. It is based on some requirements for donor segmentation uh, from one of the original funders. So the bit of uh, uh, the CV rule system that I know works in a lot of circumstances is the bit about donor segmentation because one of my customers use it. Other stuff might work as well, but we don't see that a lot. The initial development was funded by MAF Norway, Amnesty International of Landere, Ilya de Costa, and we as Civic Co op did some contribution as well. And Civic Co op developed Civic Rules, but it's not ours as in it belongs to Civic Co op, it's ours as it belongs to the community. So we all can share it, we can all use it, we can all change it, we can all support it. Um, it's as any CVCRM extensions, free of any license cost, but also like CVCRM, it's free as in kittens, not free as in beer. Does that make sense? If you go to the pub at the end of the day and go for a free beer, you get it, you drink it, and then you forget about it. Free kittens need tender loving care, milk, food every day, a clean litter, and the same principle applies to any free software. It's not free as in beer, it's free as in kittens. <laughs> okay, CV rules uh, works on three basic principles, a trigger, a condition, and an action. And the start is the trigger. And the trigger is something that makes the rule check and do something. And usually it's something that happens within CVCRM. So it's stuff like, I have a new donation, or a case is completed, or a contact has changed, or a contribution has changed. And what CV rules will do, whenever that trigger happens, it will start to check a couple of conditions, and if the conditions are met, it will automatically process an action. That sounds really wonderful. You can also imagine that it's one of those with great power comes great responsibility things because once it's automated, no one remembers. We actually now have our first customer who use a very complicated thank you rule. All of the staff have left and no one remembers why they did it that way or what it should do. So it's quite important if you design these kind of triggers that you know why you know what you want to achieve, and you keep track of it. Okay, and the second part is condition. So what is checked when that trigger happens? Um, and what should then happen? So a, an example of a condition could be, is it the first contribution of a contact? Or is the contact member of a group or is the case status completed? Or is the amount donated larger than 100 euro, for example? These are conditions. And CV rules can combine these conditions by saying and, 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 or, 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 but there's no priority system. So there's no stuff like if I put brackets around that and then they are get first priority and then I can execute some others, etc. It, it was designed to be relatively straightforward. If you want really, really complicated things, talk to developers. They really like to make complicated things. And if I have the trigger, if the conditions are met, we get an action in the end. And the action is what happens if all conditions are met. And there could be things like, I want to add a contact to a group, or want to remove a contact from a group. I want to add or remove a tag from a contact. I want to add an activity. I want to send an email. I want to send an SMS. I want to send a PDF.
and a couple of things before we get into showing you what they look like and actually devising one. CV rules also have delays, which means you can set up a rule and say if this trigger is met, uh, if this trigger happens, and if the conditions are met, this action should be executed two weeks later, or five minutes later, or a month later. So you can do things like if someone donates, I automatically want to send them an email four weeks later asking for a next donation. We also have a, a one special kind of trigger, and that is a so-called daily trigger for group membership. And it means that n normally the base of city rules is a contribution is changed, for example. And if the contribution that I've just received brings the donor over 500 euro, he gets promoted to the gold group. But then, so, then I also need a rule to check if he's now donated less than 500 in the last 12 months, for example. But there's no real trigger in the system to say, I'm going to do that when I don't get a contribution. That's hard to record. So what we have is a trigger which runs every day and says, for all the members of this group, check something and do something. Um, we've also given you the ability, which I'll show in a second, to add tags to CV rules, because we've experienced that some uh, uh, get quite a few rules, and uh, uh, the rules might be different. So there might be rules based on membership, there might be rules based on fundraising, there might be uh, rules based on communication. So we've added the ability to add tags to them, so you can organize them and make the list of rules only show those you're interested in. You can add a detailed description, which is very in, uh, uh, useful if you actually do want to record what you want to achieve with this rule. And there's also, also actually quite uh, some documentation. Which I hope are actually now showing up, probably not. So I'll just bring them up here. Obviously, you're all aware of this page, which gives you an overview of the CV CRM documentation. And we have the user guide here, but there are also quite a few extensions that have created documentation. CV rules has as well. So you can see the book of, with a few examples, and also technical documentation if you want to create your own sets. If you want to, you can develop your own conditions and actions within CV rules. And for those of you who've done it, it is fairly straightforward to create one and add them to the system. The documentation also explains how you can do that. I will not go into it, this is not a developer session. But so let us look at the donor segmentation example, just to see how this stuff then looks. I have a CV rules menu when I install the CV rules extension and I have a find CV rules button which will ask me do you want to see all rules, do you only want to see active rules or do you only want to see rules with a specific tag. So if you have 25 rules you don't want to see all of them, you just want to see the ones for fundraising.
And when I do that, I get a list of all the rules that are in the system. If there is a detailed explanation, there's a little question mark there, which you can click to get an explanation of this is what this rule is about. So in this case, the rule is to make sure that the donor is correctly added to the bronze donor group when the contribution changes from status pending to status completed. I already have a rule for a new donation, but I also need to make sure that if a donation comes in with the status pending rather than completed straight away, it is not forgotten. So, let's look at the first one. Which is, I want a rule that will add all of my donors to the group bronze donors when I have a new contribution. And I want to make sure I only do that when the donors are not already classified as a silver or a gold donor, because I don't want to put them in bronze if they're actually more important to me. You can see here that I've selected the trigger, which is contributions added, so I have a new donation. And I've added a number of conditions, because it's, not, it's never simply just when I get a new donation, because there's always more stuff. So in this case, if I have a new contribution, and the financial type is donation, because I don't want to do this for event fees or membership dues or other stuff and the status is completed and the contact is not already a bronze, gold or silver donor and the total contributed amount for this donor in the last 12 months is still less than 50. That, that's the set of conditions for this specific rule. And then, in the end, I have an action that needs to take place, which is add the contact to the group of bronze donors. So what will happen is every time a donation comes into my system, CV rules will check for me, is it one of financial type donations, is the status completed, has the donor not been classified yet, and has he donated less than 50 for the period? Yes, add in two donors to bronze donors. Yeah? So I automatically classify each initial donor. Any questions so far? My next example is this downgrade example where we spoke about. So we have classified bronze donors, 50 euro, silver donors between 50 and 250, gold donors over 250. But I want to make sure that if I access my silver donors, I only do the right ones. So I want to run a job that checks every night, do I actually still qualify for the silver? So my trigger is now a special kind of trigger, which has daily trigger for group members. And I've specified that it should pick up all members of the group silver donor. And for each of those contacts, it should check if this condition applies, which is, is the total contributed amount in the last 12 months less than 51? And if it is, kick him out of silver donors and put him in bronze. Yeah? So every time a donation comes in, it automatically qualifies the donor, and each night all of the members of a group are checked if they still qualify.
Now, finally, I'm going to show you how a new uh, rule is configured, because I'm now going to configure one for the gold donors, right? So I'm going to go and create a new rule. And I'm going to give it a name. And obviously, I should include wonderful text describing everything, complete with images, etc., etc., so that once everyone's left the organization, we still know what we want to achieve. And I can add a trigger. So I'm now going to select when is my rule going to do something which could be a load of things. This is based on all the entities that Civicerum holds, so it can work on addresses, on activities, on contributions, on memberships, on contacts, and um, they will all basically have the added, changed, deleted action. There's some special ones, like an activity date is reached, and there's probably lots of use cases out there for other special ones, get developers to create them for them for you if you need them. Right now I'm going to go for the contribution is added. And I'm going to hit the save button. And now that I've successfully link the trigger to my rule, I can specify the conditions and I can specify the actions. So I'm going to pick up the conditions I'm going to say my first condition is I want to make sure that my contact is not already in the group gold because if he's already in gold, I don't have to check anything anymore. Hmm. Oh, save button. Yeah. And as you can see here, I get the option to say it should be one of the selected groups or it should be in all of these selected groups or it should be not in a specific group. So in this case I'm going to say it should not be in the group. I don't like this. Oh. Gold donors. So that's one condition. And I'm going to add just one more, so we have a, I think a good example. I'm going to say if my total contributed amount, which is special condition, and as you can see, I have a, a box here which allows me to select the periods. So it could be any time, it could be in the last week, or it could be, which is quite often, last 12 months. And I have a whole list of is greater than 250. And I would need to make it complete a check on the financial type and a check on the contribution status. I'm going to leave that for now. It's going to be a repetition. And I can add an action, which in this case is I want to add the context to a group. And I can specify the delay. So I could specify here to say don't execute it immediately but execute it on a certain day, after a number of weeks, after a couple of minutes, because I want to make sure that I uh, uh, 
take out as many keying mistakes as possible. For example, if you give people five minutes, they will tend to, uh, if they typed in 250 rather than 25, spot that within five minutes or don't spot it at all. I'm going to leave the delay now. When I do the delay, normally all my conditions are checked at the time that the trigger happens. So every time the donation is added, it will check my conditions. It will then recheck those conditions when my delay is met. So if I say do it in a week's time, in a week's time it will check again, do all these conditions apply. Now you could imagine that there might be use cases where you say I don't want him to check again in two weeks time because I know it will have changed but he still needs to do something. So then I can tick this box which then says don't recheck. You just check when the trigger happens and don't recheck when the actual action takes place. <coughs> And obviously, I can either select a single group or multiple gr groups. I will go to Gold Donor and save. And I have now completed my rule. Any questions? Hi, Luciano. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens in the scenario that you have sometimes you don't have the contribution complete, you have like a contribution pending yeah. a different status, yeah. and you change the status of the contribution and you want to trigger at that moment. Yeah. Have you been with that because if you check, I mean the contribution can change but not yeah. the status of yeah. Did everyone catch the question? So what happens when a contribution comes in as pending and it's changed to complete later? Then it will obviously not meet this rule. So you will need an additional rule with the trigger contributions changed, which then links on contribution status is now completed. Yes, but when you, I mean, you need, you need only the part that the contribution has changed the status. Yeah. Because if anything changed but not the status, yeah. Trigger. I don't follow you. You have like a special uh, trigger for contribution is deleted. Uh, yeah, it? contribution is changed. It's changed. Yeah. Any, any field of the contribution. No, no, you then add the condition to say contribution status is completed. It's completed, but yeah. it before it was completed, and it changed the status of receipts. Yeah, yeah, it, it could be, absolutely. So what could happen is you save it and it was already completed. Mm -hmm. But if it was already completed, then the group, the, the donor will already be in the gold group. So it will ignore it because you will add the condition, it's not a gold donor yet. Yeah, so. Exactly. The lesson is, however, you have to think really hard on all the conditions you need to specify because the wonderful thing about automation is it will automatically do it many times. So if you made a mistake, it will also repeat your mistake many times. So it's quite, yeah, sure. Is it possible to set up two rules where one action serves as the trigger for another rule? I've not tried that. It might be possible. I don't know. But in theory, yes, if you have, for example, a rule which uh, automatically adds someone to a group, and then you have a rule saying do something when someone's added to that group, you effectively achieve that. And you might risk creating infinite loops. Absolutely. With this comes great responsibility. Yes. It's a bit like smart groups. Anyone ever try to create smart group within smart group within smart group? No? Try it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this applies for here as well. It's quite easy to make well, quite easy, but you can indeed make indefinite loops and you can crash your system and you can kill your performance with great power, etc., etc., etc. Any more? There's one at the back, sorry, John. Yeah? I'm coming over so everyone can hear. Yeah? Scenario. Um, 
if I want to email a user who's booked for an event but their payment is pending, I want to email them every week until they pay. Yeah. Is that covered by um, city rules or scheduled jobs or what would, would that be? Um, I would have to work it out, but in that case I would probably use Shadow's Reminders because it could repeat. Yeah. But I'm sure you could also, with the CV rules, uh, achieve that by uh, 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 putting them in a group and then using the group trigger to send an email. John? Hi. Um, so I was just... Does anyone have an example? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got one example where we said if someone registers for an event saying coming, we sent out a tweet on Twitter saying, hey, we have now so many people coming to this event, are you joining? That's a fairly creative one. Anyone else using CV rules? I can show you examples, but it's far more interesting if others do. Anyone else has an example? No? No one? Okay. We have a customer who's used uses CV rules to send out a survey email automatically whenever a case is reaches the status completed. Um, we have customers who do uh, cert, send out certain emails to their own staff whenever a case activity is added. Um, we have a uh, completed a rule, developed a specific rule with a, 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 a separate extension that triggers on a web form being submitted. So there's, there's lots more complicated things you can do. Um, I specifically use fairly boring examples so it's quite clear what it's doing because it's easy to make a, a, an extremely complicated rule that makes the system fall over and I don't want to bother you with that. If you are interested in seeing more examples I will show you but I won't show some of the data of my customer on the screen. The obvious answer is you use Civi rules if you use it with WordPress or Joomla, because you don't have Drupal rules. I don't think there's a specific answer for it. The specific answer is you use the instrument which helps you to achieve what you want to achieve. So if you're used to using Drupal rules and you know exactly how it works and you think you can achieve what you want by using Drupal rules, then do. Um, this tends to be more Civi CRM focused. So um, I'm not a, a, a big Drupal rule user, so I wouldn't know what the limits are of what you can achieve by the Drupal rules. But if you're creative and combine it with CVC or an entity, you can probably achieve a lot. Yeah? So the same applies with the scheduled reminders. If you're happy with the scheduled reminders, and it, uh, you can achieve what you want to achieve, because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that counts, not the instrument you use. It's, does it do what I want it to do? Any more questions? Could you set up a rule? Could you set up a rule that would trigger after a number of activities had happened? A rule which checks if a number of activity had happened. Um, so, like so, we have uh, volunteers. After they've done their first six shifts, yeah. that we then say you come in for a review. Okay. Um, obviously, you can't, there's no condition in there which says, is this the sixth activity of a person or the sixth activity of a person? It would be fairly straightforward to create one. So it's, it would be because we've created an engine which allows developers to add that. It would probably be two, three hours to add some something like that. Um, what you could probably achieve is do something with one of the fields in the activity to mark that this is the sixth and then it triggers off. Be 
that could be in a smart group or there is actually a fairly complicated condition which says where am I where am I field value comparison this one which allows you to use any of the fields that are available with the entities you are using. So if for instance your trigger is a do donation, you can use the entity contact and you can use the entity contribution. And you can say, well actually, I only want this to happen if the contribution transaction ID is equal to or is less than or is not empty. So by combining this basically allows you to use for example any of the activity fields with the activity. So you could use one of the fields like location or something to say this is now the sixth and then it will trigger it up. Yeah? Any more? No? That was all I had to tell you. Thank you. Thank you.